Alright everybody, Ludacris put out a new mixtape called IDGAF, which as far as I know means I don't give a fuck, but he obviously can't call the album that because people don't want to go around saying, have you heard Ludacris' new album? I don't give a fuck. It just sounds too long. So it's IDGAF. Check the mixtape out. Gonna give you a quick review. I'm actually gonna do a song by song by song by song by song by song because it's only 10 tracks long. So how is the mixtape? I mean, last I really heard of Ludacris was when he did that song with David Guetta, Guetta, however the fuck you say his name. I don't listen to him, so I don't really care. He did a song with him and Usher, and it was some techno sort of bullshit club music that I hated. I didn't like at all. I don't want to hear that shit from Ludacris. <clears throat> but I digress. The mixtape. Let's see. Is it better than that, or is it the same type of shit? Well, it's definitely better than that. It is a little different. So, first off, we have the IDGAF intro. It's an intro. I'm not going to waste any time talking about an intro. Who cares? Second song, If I Ain't Effed Up. Again, I think the F stands for fuck, but it might stand for... Frig. Just didn't want anyone to hear me say that. Such, such harsh language. Uh, if I Ain't Effed Up. Uh, basically, it's just a typical trap beat. It kind of sounds like a beat that Meek Mill passed on. There's a lot of that boom, 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 really booming bass. And it just some typical ignorant raps about being fucked up and shit. I mean, there's nothing really overly original with that song. Or on the album, to be even more specific. The whole album, there's not really anything original that's going to blow you away. It's just a lot of, you know, mainstream, commercialized, party bullshit music, more or less. But it's not executed as bad as the party commercial music on French Montana's album. But, I mean, this is ludicrous. You, you expect better. Um, uh, the third song, Raised in the South. Featuring Young Jeezy. This is the highlight song of the whole album. I really like the beat. It's banging. Has Young Jeezy on it. Jeezy, you know, I always like to hear Young Jeezy. He's not the type of guy who you would argue is one of the best rappers in the game or this and that. But, you know, I like hearing Jeezy on a verse. And on a song with Ludacris talking about being raised in the South, you know exactly what type of song you're going to get. And Ludacris on this sounds amazing. Like, it sounds like he's actually hungry again. His verses on it are good. Listen to the verses. Listen to the shit he says. He has some clever punchlines and shit in there. And his flow is good and he just rap. He's rapping like he really wants it again. Like he's, he's trying to show that he still has it. And he does on that song. Then we have the song Hell of a Night. I didn't like that. Didn't like it at all. Because the beat, it sounds like a Tiger beat. You know those songs that just go, Hey, 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 hey. Through the whole back of the song, you have that hey going on. Not the good 3-6 Mafia hey, like, you know, when it sounds grimy, just the hey, hey, just that type of shit, and lots of finger snaps, and I wasn't feeling the beat. When you hear it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It just sounds like some Tiger type of shit. You'll get it, believe me. Okay, now here we go. Here's where shit really gets bad. Nine times out of ten, featuring French Montana and Q, I guess that's how you say his name, it's spelled Q-U-E. This beat is great. It's a great beat, but they ruin the shit because it has auto-tune on it. And not only is it bad enough that it's got auto-tune on it, they're saying eeny, meeny, miny, mo, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, which completely just takes you out of the element of a rap song when you're hearing eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Like, I don't need to hear that shit ever, let alone on a rap song. If I'm going to hear that, it's going to be because, you know, I'm picking some kids up at, at preschool if I had kids, not, not just anyone's kids. That sounded really fucking creepy, but you know what I mean, like, kids are onto that shit, it doesn't work in rap songs when they do that, I hate when they do that, when they take nursery rhymes, fairy tale type of shit, I don't know, maybe it works sometimes, most of the time it doesn't, I can't think of an example where it does work right now, um, so I think it's Q who's singing the eeny, meeny, miny, mo part, and it's lame as fuck, um, and it has French Montana on it, so you know what you're gonna get with French Montana, a completely dirty, throwawayable verse, just some dirty trash garbage rapping. Like, they should have just left his verse empty and it would have been better. You'd be like, oh shit, who's that rapping? Nobody? Oh, nobody's better than French Montana, but they have French Montana on it. And Q doing auto-tune, it's just, it's too bad. Because the beat is a banger. I said banger a lot in this review, but I mean, that's how a lot of the beats would be described. The beat is a banger and Ludacris's parts on it are good, but all the other shit just ruins it at least for me, makes it completely unlistenable. So, that song, called 9 times out of 10, not a fan of that. Next we have the song, Speaking to the Mic, produced by Mike Will made it. Again, like, the rapping is good enough, but it's just, it's good enough rapping, but the song is just kind of uninspired. I don't know, it didn't do a whole lot for me. 
I listen to it a couple times. Maybe I, I miss some shit. I mean, every time I do a review, people tell me, listen more. You just need to give it five or six listens. But again, when I do my album reviews, I'm just listening to the album three or four times and then saying what I think. I'm not trying to dig into the shit and pick it apart piece by piece by piece. I'm just trying to give you a review of what my ears are thinking. Okay? I'm not dissecting the shit. But that's one of the worst Mike Will beats that I've heard. Not to say it's bad, but it's not one of his best productions. It's, it's, I don't know, he should have got something different out of Mike Will's library. Ludacris, come on, man. You could have got a better beat out of him than that. Then we have the song Dancing Dirty featuring Chris Brown. I mean, the song's called Dancing Dirty and it's featuring Chris Brown. I don't even really need to talk about it. You can figure out what that shit is. It kind of sounds like a song from the early 2000s, almost. It's just, I don't know, I didn't like it. Eight, the eighth track, IDGAF, you know, that's the title track, produced by Bangladesh. Again, just another kind of trap beat. It's just empty. It's just bass going through it. You know, there's a lot of beats on this that are just filled up with bass. And I like bass, but this shit that is just, you know, the bass is louder than every fucking thing going on in the song. Like, it's just boom, 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 boom. Except it sounds better than that, and it doesn't look stupid like my face did when I did that. But... You know the type of songs, I mean, the bass is just taking the whole song over, like, you can have your shit turned down all the way almost, just turn up a bit, and your neighbors will still probably complain about the bass, which, you know, that's probably why the songs have the bass, is so you can just fuck with people and drive around blasting loud bass, but it gets repetitive after a while, man, these beats are so repetitive, a lot of the shit on this album is just, you know, the next song, Nine, She A Trip, featuring Mac Miller, Mac Miller's just on the hook, uh, it doesn't really add a whole lot to the song. I don't know why you bother getting them on, but whatever. You got Mac Miller on. Again, it's another trap sound and beat. Nothing overly original about it. And this song here, number 10, is called Mad Bo. This is a song that most people are going to talk about and have some shit to say about. Because, listen to the people on it. Meek Mill, Chris Brown, Swiss Beats, and Pusha T. So, where I'm coming with this, basically, the beat is really cool, but I don't need to hear Meek Mill again. It's not even that Meek Mill is awful. I just, I don't, I don't like Meek Mill's rap. And when he first came out, I thought, I thought he was kind of dope because he's really aggressive and, you know, he had a good flow. Like, he has some good verses and good lines and shit, but I'm just tired of him. Like, I'm, I'm not a Meek Mill fan. Just sounds like he's screaming in your ear all the time. Like, if he took an empty paper towel roll and went like this and put it in your ear, and was rapping in your ear? It'd be fucking annoying. Like, you know, Meek Mill rapping. Uh, speaking of annoying, Swizz Beats is on this. He has... A couple raps. He's got like a little verse, which is unnecessary. We don't need a Swizz Beats verse, do we? What? Yeah, no, we don't. We absolutely don't need Swizz Beats verses. And he's on the hook again. And I hate Swizz Beats hooks, man. This is something that's been bothering me for a while. Just any song that he has a hook on, you can just pick one that's came out over the past couple of years. I'm, I'm never feeling it. When he's just saying some shit. Welcome to the jungle, huh? Welcome to the jungle. Just the same, same repetitive shit over over. Same thing pretty much on this song. Uh, Chris Brown arguably has the best verse on it. I don't know. He sounded pretty good. And the beat is cool on the, on the song. Uh, Pusha T's on it. That's a whole other discussion. I don't understand Pusha T hype. Love the clips. The shit the clips did was incredible. And I do think Pusha T is a good rapper. But I don't get how some of you think that he is like the second coming of God as far as rap music goes. Like he's going to completely change the game. Mind you, when his album drops, I'm going to do a review of it. I'm going to listen to it. I'm open-minded. I am open-minded. <clears throat> starting to fucking slur my words. I'm not drunk, I promise. I just worked all day. I'm kind of tired. Uh, I am going to give his album a really good chance because I want to be blown away. I want to be blown away by every album I listen to. That's why I'm a harsh critic. It's not that I'm just out to bash artists, although, you know, if you don't like an album or an artist, it's funnier to, to exaggerate and bash it than to just be nice and apologetic like a lot of critics are about albums, but I'm getting all off track. Anyway, Pusha T, he's on it, he sounds good. If you like Pusha T, you'll like it. I don't get all the Pusha T hype yet, but hopefully I will after his album comes out. So I believe it comes out in the summer. So that's basically it. You know, I was excited with this album because the first couple of tracks were bangers and it was good to hear Ludacris doing that, but Ludacris isn't doing anything new on this, you know? Maybe that's why it's called I Don't Give a Fuck, because he doesn't give a fuck what I say, he doesn't give a fuck what anyone says, but there's nothing new, there's nothing on here that stands out, and I feel like Ludacris being a veteran in the game, he should be setting trends, not just following trends, you know, he should be raising the bar. And on this mixtape, he's still spitting, like, he can still spit fire, 
but the beats are just uninspired. It's just, you know, even the song concepts are very just bland. But, you know, this, this is what makes it hard about reviewing mixtapes. How serious do rappers take these mixtapes? You know, the game has changed. It's not like before where people just did albums, you know, maybe a mixtape here and there. Now you get all these mixtapes leading up to the album, the album comes out, and sometimes you're disappointed. Sometimes the mixtape is better. Sometimes the album is better. I feel like the album should always be better. But that's a whole other discussion. We'll see when he puts out a, an album. But, you know, I give this album about a 3 out of 5 because it's not awful. You know, the rapping is good on it. The beats are good. But, again, there's nothing original about it that's going to, you know, it's not going to blow you away. Like, I would compare this album to, you know, like getting a hand job from a fat chick when you're drunk at the bar. You know, like, it's alright, I guess, but you're not going to go crazy about it. You're probably not going to tell everyone about it and say, man, you got to check this out. You really got to try getting a hand job from a fat chick when you're drunk in the club in the back. Or Ludacris' new mixtape. I don't know, listen to it if you want. Get a hand job from a fat chick if you want. I'm not going to judge you. It's just what I think.